Welcome to my very first video tutorial. If you don't already know about my thread follower kits and patterns, let me welcome you and introduce myself. I'm Cynthia Treen, plush designer, stitcher, and sewing enthusiast, and today I'm excited to teach you to make this little snail backpack, which is an accessory that can fit many of my kits. So let's get started! I'm holding here a finished sample of my Felix Fox kit, and he's wearing the first snail backpack that I created. If we open up the front closure, we can see inside the backpack. So here's the little snail. And when you turn it over, you can see that there's a little drawstring, which also has two more of those check glass seed beads. Inside the backpack, you'll find a little compartment where you can fit all sorts of miniature treasures. This next sample has a longer strap and no drawstring closure so that you can use it as a wrist pin cushion. Here are the five pieces you'll need to make the snail backpack. A full list of tools and materials will be included with the pattern PDF. If you decide to make the snail to fit your wrist, you'll need to cut two lengths of the strap piece. After you've cut out your paper pattern pieces, the next thing is to baste your pattern pieces to the fabric that you've chosen. As you can see on the shell piece, I've cut all the way into the center of the spiral and basted it around the outer edge. For the head piece, I've got the two layers that we'll need basted together to the paper pattern piece. This little piece is the base closure piece, and this is going to help us connect the drawstring closure piece to the body of the snail. This is the drawstring closure piece. And the last piece that we have is the strap piece, which I have not yet cut out. So we'll, uh, we'll take care of that in a little bit as well. Let's now take a look at some of our other supplies. These are the check glass two hole seed beads that we'll be using for the eyes and for the drawstring closure. Another thing that we'll need is some embroidery thread to match our fabric. This thread I've already cut into 36 inch lengths for sewing. This is some more embroidery thread in red, which I'm using for the basting today. And this is a six inch pipe cleaner, which I'll use to wire the snail's head. This is some pearl cotton embroidery floss number eight. And this is what we'll use for the drawstring on the pouch. You can see that it looks a little bit like a rope. Now these are my favorite scissors for cutting out my patterns and kits. They are Fiskars Soft Grip Micro Tip Scissors, and they're spring-loaded, as you can see, and sharp right to the point of the scissors, which is great for getting into tight corners. As for your sewing needle, I like to use a number six embroidery needle. These are also called cruel needles, and they have an oblong hole that makes them easier to thread with multiple strands of embroidery floss. If you find that you're struggling threading your needles, you might try moving up to the next size, say a number eight, or using a needle threading tool. Another tool I like to keep handy is a pair of needle nose pliers. These are great for all sorts of things. I use them all the time for pulling out threads. Another thing that you will need for the project is some kind of stuffing. I like to use 100% wool stuffing uh, because it has a nice sort of binding quality and it's easy to push into small places with a bamboo skewer, which is what we'll be using as our stuffing tool today. So now we're ready to get started cutting. So I'm just gonna use the nice sharp points of these scissors to get into that corner. and then cut around the outside of the spiral. One thing I wanna mention as we begin cutting out our pattern pieces is the importance of basting. As you can see, I've basted all my paper pattern pieces to the felt before I began cutting. I find that the use of pins distorts the fabric on small scale projects and that basting allows for more accurate cutting and no sharp pins poking you while you cut. When you finish cutting the outside of the spiral, you'll cut the inside of the spiral. As you can see, I pre-cut the paper before I basted it on to make it a little bit easier to cut around the interior spiral. 
When you get part way around the spiral, you'll probably want to fold the beginning portion out of your way so you can continue cutting into the center. When you reach the center of the spiral, this is where the sharp point of these scissors really comes in handy. You can get right in there with the tips of the scissors and cut out tiny little shapes like this. Once you've finished cutting, you can use your scissors and your pliers to take out the basting stitches and separate the paper from the fabric. Next, we're going to thread our needle with a single strand of embroidery thread. Let's use some instant replay to show the technique several times in order to talk through the process. First, pinch the end of the thread between your thumb and index finger so just the end is visible and the thread is supported between your two fingers. Then you can center the eye of the needle over the end of the thread and slip the thread through the eye of the needle. To make a knot at the end of your thread, pinch the thread between your thumb and index finger. Wrap the thread around your finger and then roll the loop. Remove your index finger and replace it with your middle finger, then pull to make your knot. Now we're ready to make a running stitch around the outer edge of the shell that spirals into its center. The running stitch is worked by rocking the needle in and out of the fabric to create a dashed line. Continue working the running stitch about 1 16th of an inch from the edge of the felt until you've reached the center of the spiral. I love these Merchant & Mills Spanish Lace Pins for small scale projects. They're about a third shorter than average straight pins and a perfect size for my miniature felt animals. What I'm doing here is pinning the longer outer edge of the spiral to the shorter inner edge of the spiral so that when we gather our running stitch, the longer edge will already be eased in to match the shorter edge. Continue pinning and easing the long edge to match the short edge until you reach the center of the spiral. Pull the knotted end of the thread to begin gathering the running stitch. Then ease the gathered felt edge between the pins. After gathering, remove the pins and make individual basting stitches along the length of the spiral. You can see here that each basting stitch is an individual unit, and those can be clipped away as you're stitching and stuffing the spiral. As you can see, I have a spiral partially stitched here and the shell starting to take shape. I'm taking turns making a few stitches and then stuffing the space that they created. You have to stitch and stuff simultaneously to create a small spiral shape like this. As you reach each basting stitch, Cut the threads away and remove them with your needle nose pliers. Use small pinches of stuffing and a bamboo skewer to push the stuffing into the spiral tube. Leave the last three quarter inches of the tube free of stuffing so that the head can later be fit into that space, then set the spiral shell aside. Whip stitch the sides of the head, leaving the flat base end open for stuffing. Then sew one seed bead eye onto each pointed felt end. Fit a piece of wire or pipe cleaner up into the head and the pointed eye sockets. Then use your bamboo skewer to push small pinches of stuffing into the head. When you have finished stuffing the head, fold the pipe cleaner so that the head is at a right angle and bend the eyes down so that they look forward. Insert the pipe cleaner end of the head into the hole you left at the end of the spiral shell tube. If the pipe cleaner is too long, fold the end in order to make it fit well. Use your bamboo skewer to stuff around the neck to fill out the end of the shell tube. To stitch the spiral together, we will use a blind stitch, beginning with our knot secured at the top center of the spiral. Blind stitches are typically used to connect one edge to another edge. Because it is a stuffed spiral, it may look a bit different than other applications you've seen, but it works in exactly the same way. 
As you can see, I'm alternating each stitch from one side of the spiral to the other, drawing the edges of the spiral together. The great thing about the blind stitch is that, as suggested by its name, the stitches are all hidden below the surface and invisible to the eye, which is perfect for constructing this snail shell. When your blind stitch reaches the neck connection, make a small stitch that bridges the shell and the neck, then transition into a whip stitch to connect the circumference of the neck to the shell's entrance hole. As you stitch, it's normal for your thread to become twisted, so periodically you'll want to adjust for that. In this case, I'm removing my needle, separating the two embroidery threads, and manually untwisting them before trimming my ends and rethreading my needle. Another option is to hold your work and let the thread and needle hang down and simply untwist on their own before beginning to stitch again. When you complete your whip stitch, knot the thread close to the surface of the fabric. Insert the needle into the hole you just came out of and pop the knot below the surface of the felt. The next step is to construct the drawstring pouch. Stitch the short ends of the pouch together with a whip stitch. I've found that a sixteenth of an inch seam allowance works well for the blend of wool and rayon felt that I use in my kits and patterns. To make your seam strong, it's a good idea to look at both your entrance point and exit point with each stitch. As you hold your fabric, shift its orientation back and forth so you can see both the entrance and exit as your needle passes through the fabric. As you make each stitch, try to evenly space them one after another. Pull the thread through the fabric, intentionally slowing the speed that you draw your thread through as the loop of thread nears the felt edge. Use your thumb and index finger to pinch the felt slightly and direct the loop to lay evenly next to the stitch before it. To attach the cylinder base to the drawstring pouch, thread the needle through the circle and fit the base around the cylinder-shaped pouch piece. You may want to baste the base to the pouch piece to secure it before you stitch. I didn't baste here and ended up needing to ease in the edge of the circular base to match the pouch piece. As you can see, on the right side of the base there's a little bit of a pucker there. It's not a big issue in this case, but if I had basted the edge it would be evenly distributed around the pouch piece. Now pin the pouch to the bottom hole of the snail shell with several pins, then set it aside to make the strap pieces. If you haven't already, go ahead and cut out the strap piece. Then fold and cut it in half. Trim to round one end of each piece. Next, finish the edges of the two straps with a buttonhole stitch. The buttonhole stitch is similar to a blanket stitch, but instead of passing your needle through the front of the hole to connect the stitches, you pass it through the back of the hole. By passing the needle through the back of the hole, you create a twist in the thread that loops around the edge. This twist appears as a small pearl or a bump and locks each stitch into place at that point. This stitch is both decorative and strong 
and it's a good choice to strengthen narrow pieces of felt like these straps. Once you've completed the buttonhole stitch around both straps, you're ready to attach your fastener. If you want to use the seed bead buttons, cut a small hole in the end of one strap and finish the interior edge of the cut with a buttonhole stitch, as I did in my original sample. The lengths of these straps will only allow for a single button. Today, I'm going to try these number four snaps for the job. They measure one quarter inch in diameter and are the perfect scale for this backpack. Stitch the male side of the snap to one rounded end and the female side to the rounded end of the remaining strap. Attach the snap ends and pin one side of the strap to the backpack just below the snail's neck, sandwiching it between the shell and the closure piece. Fit the backpack on Felix and mark the opposite end with a pin. Remove the backpack and insert the remaining strap end so that it is sandwiched between the snail shell and the closure piece. Using a two strand thickness of embroidery thread, whip stitch around the circumference of the closure base, just as you did when you stitched the neck hole. When you've completed your whip stitch, knot your thread and hide the knot. To make the drawstring closure, first untuck the pouch and cut a length of number eight pearl cotton embroidery thread. Gather your seed beads, then thread your needle, but don't knot the end of the thread. Thread the needle through the first hole of the seed bead, leaving a tail. Then thread the needle through the other hole of the seed bead. Tie a knot around the bead and pull the thread ends to tighten the knot up to the bead. Then trim the end of your thread. Trim the short thread tail close to the bead then begin making a running stitch around the pouch, about 1 16th of an inch from the edge. Make short even stitches around the edge that return you to your starting point. Next, thread the first hole of the remaining bead onto your needle. Then pass the needle through the other hole on the bead. Draw the cord in so the pouch is fully gathered, leaving about one and a half inches of cord between the bag and the second bead, so the final drawstring will be in proportion to the bag. Then knot the bead at the end of the drawstring cord and trim the thread. Holy moly, we are totally finished. That was the last cut. There it is, our little snail backpack. Well, this has taken 18 minutes for you to learn, uh, but I have been learning to film and edit this for two weeks. So I really appreciate you joining me for this tutorial and for your patience while I finished it up. Please forgive me for sounding like a robot throughout. I know I'll get better and more lifelike with practice. <laughs> I hope you'll continue tuning in so we can learn together. Thanks so much. Until next time, happy stitching.